Picture this, a species that dominated Earth for two million years. That's 10 times longer than modern humans have existed. They weren't just surviving, they were thriving across three continents, mastering fire, creating art, and possibly even building boats. Meet Homo erectus, the most successful humans who ever lived. And here's the mind-blowing part. If human history was a 24-hour day, we modern humans would only exist for the last two hours. Homo erectus, they'd own 20 of those hours. So how did they do it? How did our ancient cousins crack the code of long-term survival while species around them went extinct? The answer will completely change how you think about human evolution. I'm about to take you on a journey two million years into the past to meet the most underestimated species in human history. By the end of this video, you'll understand why everything you thought you knew about primitive early humans is wrong and why their survival secrets might hold the key to our own future. If you're fascinated by human origins and want to understand what true evolutionary success looks like, hit that subscribe button, because we're diving deep into the greatest survival story ever told. Let's put their incredible reign in perspective. Homo erectus first appeared around 2 million years ago and survived until roughly 100,000 years ago. We're talking about a species that witnessed thousands of ice ages, the rise and fall of countless other species, dramatic shifts in global climate, continental drift reshaping the planet. To truly grasp this time span, imagine if each year was just one second. Homo erectus would have lived for 23 days straight. Modern humans, we barely make it through three and a half days. But here's what makes this even more incredible. They weren't just hanging on by a thread. Archaeological evidence shows they were actively expanding, innovating, and adapting. While other early human species went extinct, Homo erectus was building the foundation for everything that came after. So what made them so special? Let's start with their revolutionary body design. Homo erectus was the first human species to look genuinely human. They had relatively flat faces, prominent noses, and most importantly, they were built for endurance. These weren't bulky, slow-moving creatures. They were lean, efficient running machines. But here's where it gets interesting. They were also the first humans to lose their body hair. Now this might seem like a disadvantage after all. Fur protects against cold, heat, and injury. But this adaptation was genius. By losing their fur and developing more sweat glands, Homo erectus became the ultimate endurance hunters. They could literally run their prey to death under the scorching African sun. While animals overheated and collapsed, Homo erectus kept going, their hairless skin efficiently cooling their bodies through sweating. And those prominent brow ridges that make them look so intimidating? Recent research suggests these weren't just for show, Anthropologists believe they were designed for combat, natural armor for a species that settled disputes with fists and clubs. Many Homo erectus skulls show evidence of serious head trauma that healed over time, suggesting they regularly survived potentially fatal blows. This was a species literally built for survival. But physical adaptations were just the beginning. The real secret to Homo erectus success was happening inside their skulls. Early Homo erectus had brains about the size of a large chimpanzee roughly 600 cubic centimeters. But over their two million year reign, their brains nearly doubled in size, eventually reaching 1,200 cubic centimeters. That's approaching the size of Albert Einstein's brain. This brain expansion didn't happen overnight. It was a gradual process driven by environmental pressures and social complexity. Bigger brains meant better problem solving, improved memory, and crucially, the ability to plan ahead. Think about what this meant in practical terms. A Homo erectus hunter could remember seasonal migration patterns of animals, predict where water would be found during dry seasons, and plan complex group hunts that required coordination between multiple individuals. But brain size came with a cost. Bigger brains require more energy, about 20% of our total daily calories. For Homo erectus, this created a feedback loop they needed better tools and hunting strategies to fuel their growing brains, which in turn made them even better at acquiring high quality food. Which brings us to their technology, and this is where Homo erectus really shines. They didn't just use tools, they perfected them. 
Their signature creation was the hand axe, a teardrop-shaped stone tool that represents one of the most successful technologies in human history. These weren't crude rocks with sharp edges, they were precisely crafted implements that required advanced planning and skill to create. Here's what blows my mind. The basic hand axe design remained virtually unchanged for over one million years. Think about that. While our smartphones become obsolete in two years, Homo erectus created a tool so perfect it didn't need improvement for a million years. But their real game changer was fire. Controlling fire was like unlocking a cheat code for survival. Suddenly they could cook food, making nutrients more available and easier to digest, extend their active hours into the night, keep dangerous predators at bay, expand into colder climates previously off limits. The earliest evidence of controlled fire use by Homo erectus dates back 1.5 million years. But mastering fire wasn't just about the technology, it fundamentally changed their social structure. Picture this, for the first time in Earth's history, you have groups of early humans sitting around campfires in the evening. They're not just staying warm, they're sharing information, telling stories and strengthening social bonds. This is where human culture, as we understand it, began. Armed with their advanced tools and fire mastery, Homo erectus did something no human species had ever done before. They went global. They were the first humans to leave Africa, spreading across Asia and establishing populations from the Republic of Georgia in the west to Indonesia in the east. We're talking about a journey of thousands of miles across diverse, challenging terrains. But here's what's truly remarkable. They didn't just wander randomly. Recent archaeological evidence suggests they may have been capable of seafaring. Homo erectus tools have been found on Indonesian islands that were never connected to the mainland, meaning they would have had to cross 24 kilometers of dangerous ocean to reach them. If true, this suggests capabilities far beyond what we previously imagined, the ability to build watercraft, navigate by stars, and coordinate complex group expeditions. This would require sophisticated communication and planning abilities. Their expansion wasn't just about exploration, it was about adaptation. Homo erectus populations developed regional variations based on local environments. Those in colder climates likely developed lighter skin to prevent vitamin D deficiency. Those in different regions adapted their tool technologies to local materials and prey animals. This flexibility, the ability to adapt rather than just survive, was crucial to their success. But perhaps the most human aspect of Homo erectus was their social behavior. Archaeological evidence reveals something profound. They cared for their sick and elderly. We found fossils of Homo erectus individuals who survived for years with debilitating injuries, broken bones, spinal problems, and severe tooth loss. These people couldn't hunt or gather effectively, yet their groups kept them alive. This isn't just about being nice. Caring for disabled group members represents a fundamental shift in survival strategy. Instead of abandoning those who couldn't contribute, Homo erectus groups recognized the value of accumulated knowledge and experience. That elderly individual who could no longer hunt, they knew where to find water during droughts, which plants were edible, and how to predict animal behavior. They were living libraries of survival information. This social intelligence extended to their daily lives. Evidence suggests they built shelters, not just temporary windbreaks, but structured dwellings up to 15 meters long. Some sites show evidence of designated areas for different activities, tool-making areas, food preparation zones, and sleeping spaces. They were creating the first human communities. So if Homo erectus was so successful, what happened to them? This is one of the biggest mysteries in paleoanthropology. After dominating the planet for two million years, they began disappearing from the fossil record around 400,000 years ago, with the last known population surviving on the Indonesian island of Java until about 100,000 years ago. The most likely explanation involves a perfect storm of challenges. First, climate change. Around 400,000 years ago, Earth entered one of its most severe glacial periods. Unlike later human species who developed sophisticated cold weather adaptations, Homo erectus technology remained relatively static. Their tried and true survival strategies, unchanged for hundreds of thousands of years, may have become a liability when faced with rapidly changing conditions. Second, competition. 
This period saw the emergence of new human species, Homo heidelbergensis, early Neanderthals, and eventually our own ancestors. These newcomers had larger brains, more sophisticated tools, and importantly, more flexible behavioral repertoires. But here's a crucial point. Homo erectus didn't simply go extinct. Many researchers believe they evolved into these new species. In a sense, their extinction was actually their ultimate success. They became us. Recent genetic studies have even suggested that some modern human populations carry traces of archaic DNA that might represent Homo erectus contributions to our genome. So what can we learn from the Homo erectus success story? Their two million year reign teaches us that evolutionary success isn't about being the smartest or the strongest. It's about being adaptable. Homo erectus succeeded because they could modify their behavior, their technology, and even their biology in response to changing conditions. 